Hello there, I'm Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. Now normally when there is a, a security breach on the internet and hackers have been able to download the database from a service which contains the username and the password and the, the uh, email addresses, that password is stored using a hash. Now there is a way of cracking those hashes so you can find out what the original passwords were. So if you want to know how to crack passwords, please let me explain. Now before we go on, I just want to say I do not condone in any way any kind of uh, hacking, any kind of illegal activities. However, for a security testing point of view, the ability to test the strength of your system and the strength of the uh, way that the passwords are stored in your database is essential. Now the tool we're going to be using today is called Hashcat. Hashcat is an open source project that is designed specifically for cracking hashes to find out what the original passwords were. Now the great thing about uh, Hashcat is that it uses the GPU inside of your uh, desktop PC so it actually manages to do this at a pretty fast rate. Now, I've mentioned hashes a couple of times up until now. What do I mean by a hash? Well, a hash is basically a function that returns a string that's a kind of a fingerprint or a summary of a block of data. So you could have a JPEG file, you apply the hash to it, and it will give you this number that is uh, unique. If you have a different photograph, a different file, and you apply the hash to it, you get a completely different number. And if you apply it to text, for example, then if you apply it to uh, an email, let's say, and then you get the hash, if you change one letter in that email, if you change the letter A to letter B or the le a lowercase a to an uppercase A, then that hash will change dramatically. So you can see whether two things have actually been uh, changed or whether they are actually identical. Now passwords, when they are stored, if it is a, a reasonably secure system, they're not stored in plain text. So if you type in your password is, you know, uh, password one, okay, it's not, that's not what's in the database. The hash of password one is in the database. So when the hackers have managed to download the database, they don't have password one and one, two, three, four, five, six as a list of passwords. They have all these long hashes that are the hashes of the different uh, passwords. And the job of Hashcat is to take those numbers, those uh, hashes, and reverse them to tell us what the original password was. Now there are two main methods for attacking a password. One is using the brute force attempt, which means you, attempt, you try AA, AAB, AAC, uh, AAD, and then BAA, BAB, and so on. So you basically cycle through all the letters, including the numbers and punctuation marks and everything to try to brute force the password out of there. And the second uh, way of doing it is using a dictionary attack. So you take common words that people use in passwords, for example, password one or one, two, three, four, five, six, and you use those as the basis of trying to guess what the next password is because if people have been using password one then it isn't unreasonable they might use password one two or something like that so by the way if your password is password one or one two three four five six or anything like that go and change it now now hashcat is here in this in this uh, folder and i've created a set of uh, hashes that i've created myself some interesting hashes that i thought we might like to try to test so it's test dots hash there they are there's four of them uh, and I'm gonna flash them on the screen now so you can see actually what they are, so we can see how hard you think they might be to crack or not. Okay, so there they were. So let's do our first attempt. So the first thing we're gonna try and do is a brute force attack. So let's do hashcat. It's the 64-bit version, and we're gonna do minus A, which is the attack mode three, which means do it uh, brute force. We want to use our file test.hash, and we want to say, are there any five letter passwords in there that can be anything at all, including um, sort of punctuation marks, lowercase, uppercase letters, and so on. So let's see how long that's gonna take it to do that. And it started off, and now it's, and there it is already. We can see it's cracked ZZG dollar one. That was a five letter password. Now it's done that pretty quick. According to my uh, kind of testing here, if it was a six letter password, it would have taken about 10 minutes. If it was a seven letter password, it would take about 17 hours. And if it was an eight letter password, it would take 68 days. 
Now, if it was a 10 character password of uppercase and lowercase and letters and so on, then it would take 127 years. So to put that into context, if I had a supercomputer with 127 nodes in it, and each node had four graphics GPU cards, then it would still take, even with this huge 127 node supercomputer, it would still take three months to crack a 10 character password uh, using completely random sequences. So don't use four, five, six, seven uh, length passwords. That's definitely out today. So obviously it didn't yield our other passwords. So what else can we try here? Well, let's try a dictionary attack. So to do that again, we say hashcat 64. We're going to try the attack mode now is going to be zero, which is where you give it a dictionary. So now we give it our test file, which was test dot hash and we're going to give it a dictionary and I've got one here example dictionary I'll show that to you in a minute to show you what's in there let's start that off and here it goes running and we can see it's already found the one with password that was an easy one to find let me just show you the example dictionary it's basically a list of words that it's going to try against to see where whether there's anything in there that uh, you've already used and if we scroll down we would eventually find password is in there now there are bigger much much bigger uh, ones i've got one here called rock you which is probably the biggest one up till now it's got 14 million different passwords in it so that would be uh, a much more uh, certainly a much more wider attack of in terms of the passwords that it can use. Now, we've still got two passwords that haven't been found. So what we can do now is we can add to our uh, dictionary attack. We can say, use some rules. Now, what do the rules do? Rules do things like say, uh, if you see the letter E, turn it to a, uh, a three. If you if the if the first letter is uppercase, if all the words are uppercase, uh, double the words. So maybe the password is password password. And there are a whole bunch of rules in here that they've defined these rule sets. And one of them here is dive dot rule. And we can try that now against our uh, against our test of hashes. And let's see whether that able to turn up anything. And it's just working now. And there the first one. So this one here was basketball but we changed the A to a four and the E to a three and the A to a four again. Okay, so that was basketball. It found that pretty quick. And then there's the fourth one, which was a lot longer, if you remember from what I showed up on the screen. So how's that doing? It's going through uh, and there it is at the top. It found it. There we go. Look at that chocolate cake with the E at the end being changed into a three. It found it straight away. So if your passwords are anything like that, then uh, you better go and change them because if your database, if your uh, the internet service you're using, if the database gets hacked and leaked online, then the hackers will be able to find your password. And if you're using that password, if you're using chocolate cake three in more than one place, then they might be able to get, if they find out from you're on one site, like your email, and then they can get it or into LinkedIn or Adobe, Gmail, Yahoo, you know, Flickr, you know, Instagram, Facebook, don't use the same password because if they find it in one place, then they'll be able to hack you in all the other places. My name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, we're really trying to build up the community here, so please leave a comment below and also leave a comment tell me what other types of videos you would like to see here on this channel. And as for me, I'll see you in the comments and I'll also see you in my next video.